I was sent this um, example of handwriting that is done at present by someone who's interested in buying a fountain pen. And sometimes when I look at a, at a sheet of paper, it is easy for me to see what pen might, I might show that person first, and then I'll listen to what, if he was here in front of me, I would listen to what he says. It could be, oh, this is really scratchy, or this is really X, Y, or Z, or he might hold the pen very vertically, or he might obviously press down really, really hard, or have a very, very light touch. All of these things will go into deciding what pen might be good. Um, in this person's case, it's a little hard to tell by the image, and it might be because the image is very um, black and white. Maybe it was, maybe the camera exaggerated the contrast, maybe he has very white paper and very black ink. So there's a little less um, information provided to me from this picture. But um, I think this is how he normally writes. And this is things that I might have asked him to do or he saw me doing and he followed up with. But based on what I see, in that sample, I'm going to make a couple of assumptions. One is that he presses down on the pen in a relatively um, equal pressure throughout the entire thing. Now that's sometimes what you do when you're using a pen that has no flexibility. A very firm pen doesn't make any difference how you hard you press because it's always going to be the same. Um, that might be the case. Um, it's hard to know. Um, here, this is, I, I think some people would call this a firm slightly flexible semi-flex nib. I can get a little bit of a shade when I press down. It's a more pen from the 40s. Um, if I don't press down, if I hold it the same weight, here I'm not really pressing down at all. I'm just making sure that the nib has contact with the paper. Um, the line thickness throughout seems pretty, pretty similar. So if this was in his hand and he applied pressure that's equal throughout his making lines and writing words, um, that's what it would look like. And then I would say to him, <clears throat> well, now when you pull it toward you, you can press down a little bit and get a little bit of pizzazz. Now this is sometimes hard for people to do if they've never done it before. Part of it is they, it's a strange thing to tell someone to do, press down. <clears throat> when you're pulling the pen toward you and lift up when you're going uphill, that sometimes is asking someone, it's like asking someone who's never driven a standard uh, car, only driven automatics to drive a standard. They you know, like, what does this extra pedal do? That's what using a flexible nib is like if you've never used one before and don't know how to make it go. Um, oftentimes what I will do, uh, whether people have done this before or not, I, I'll ask them to take a letter and they'll write as fast as they can, 
and because they're writing as fast as they can, automatically there's a little tiny bit of uh, flexibility in the line um, because they're not thinking about anything other than trying to write down as many words as I as they can in my in my dictation and sometimes that shows me or shows them that yes the the pen does have this this ability and your hand has this ability to make thick and thin lines anyway back to our pen customer to be perhaps um I, I, I was, I've been very late in getting work for clients done because I just, I'm in a weird place in my life right now. I just, um, I, I'm, I, it's, we're selling our childhood home. We're trying to get out of COVID. We're, I'm trying to make money in my regular job and I just can't seem to do anything other than play around with little projects that really I might not finish even. So there's just a lot of stuff going on in my little brain. So I've been late in, in picking pens for him, but um, I did see the letter that I wrote back after I saw the sample. And I said, I'm sure I can find a pen that has some pizzazz to it. And uh, the pizzazz is certainly any pen that has a little bit of flexibility would work better than the pen that he was using to write his sample, perhaps. I mean, he could have used a very, very flexible nib pen and not pressed down at all. That's... But I know he didn't. He, he's using a steel nibbed pen. So often for people who um, have never used a fountain pen before, and I don't, I don't present them with a with a wet noodle. Um, I I I might say they might write very calligraphically and know when to press down and lift up but because I don't know them well enough I I can't quite uh, I'm not convinced that that at some point they wouldn't break a pen now I break pens all the time well some of it occasionally I break a pen not usually because I press down too hard though it might be because it falls off my table, but I'm just thinking that to start someone in on that road to moving toward being able to use a flexible nibbed pen, that uh, a pen that has some flexibility, but not necessarily a lot, because that would... Um, require a little bit more concentration on what your hand and your pen and your words and your paper i don't i don't want to put take someone out of a automatic car with gps map technology and put them in a ferrari in the middle of the wilderness and tell them to drive i I want to take little baby steps. And so a pen that I would send him, and I will send him later on this week, is a pen that has a little bit of flexibility. And I'll find another pen that I'm going to, I'm going to, I, my brain is thinking he probably would prefer a fine nibbed pen, like maybe a, a Schaefer Feather Touch with a, fine nib but has a little bit of flexibility in it because i think i think he tends to like to write small you know the ups and downs don't go further than that amount you know he's doing these big swoopy things because uh he was trying to 
copy me, I think. But um, I'm thinking a small, slightly flexible, fine nibbed pen might be the one if I if, he, if there were a hundred pens out here, I'm thinking that he might find this one to be better than the others. The others might make more calligraphic lines, and he if he learns how to do Spencerian script, he might want that pen over there. But for for what he's doing now, what he's writing now, I'm thinking a fine um, nib that has a little bit of flexibility would be a good idea. I'm also thinking if I can find one, a nib that is slightly shaped toward the stub, not a lot because anything that is too broad on one side and too narrow on the other side will seem a little bit scratchy. So I'm thinking something that I, if I can find something whose nib is maybe shaped vaguely like that, where there will be the downstroke will be automatically thicker, the side stroke will be automatically thinner, even if he will only apply exactly the same amount of pressure you're going to get a line that has variation. And again, that will be automatically seen as pizzazzy. And I think that's sort of what he was looking for. For example, here's a, here's a Schaefer that has a stub nib. And the side stroke is like that. The down stroke is like that with using the same pressure. So there is a little difference. And a pen that has this kind of a nib would, would be good for him to try. Um, because automatically you have this, quote, pizzazz, um, a nib that requires pressing down. Um, I mean, maybe this might be a fun pen for him to try. Because this one, I've been using this a lot suggesting this is the pen for the off-road driver. There's something really, really nice about this pen. It just, it seems to like to be pushed. So maybe this pen, this Schaefer, and then the Schaefer Feather Touch would be the, um, a feather with a fine Feather Touch nib would be the ones to, to send him to try out. So, um, I'm trying to think though, if there were, what, if, if there was more information on this page that I got from him, I might suggest a different pen. Um, I don't, I'm trying to imagine what it would look like if, if it was a photograph that had more tonality in it. Would I be able to see that there was more pressure applied, more ink delivered on a downstroke than on a side stroke? Maybe, I don't know. But he also, in his writing, well, he's writing in a couple of different ways. Sometimes, He's like he writes the word saddle, and the S is not connected to the A. The first D and the A are connected, and then the next D L E. That's so he's to make this word, he's stopping and picking up the pen and putting it back down again. And uh, glass G. L A S S. So that's a very interesting thing too. Um, sometimes I do that when I'm playing with a pen or you know I'm writing a word and I'll do a nice letter and I'll 
look at the pen nib and see if it's set right and then I'll write more of it but it sort of happens throughout his writing sample so I have a feeling he this is what he does naturally he breaks a word down into syllables or into groups of letters and um, that's interesting to see it's it's again really hard for me to know because i'm not watching him do this uh, maybe he'll say i'm going to send him a link to this letter this video and he can respond to it saying i got him all wrong or let me send you a different sample or something maybe maybe he'll he'll do that but i'm trying to imagine if someone were here sitting across the table from me and wrote the word glass like that what would i what would i suggest what would i think how would i interpret that way of <laughs> making that word uh, where some letters are connected and some aren't. And um, that's a big question mark. Mister, <laughs> send me a letter, explain uh, why why you did that, or if that's what you do all the time. And I'm curious to know why someone would. Um, sometimes I, if I'm doing some kind of calligraphy, I find it really hard to go from a G to a C. Is there a word that has a G and a C next to each other? Because I'm going way over here and I have to sort of get up here and then it's just sometimes I'll make the G like that. And uh, and stop it. You know, anytime I have a, a G in the middle of a word, I might uh, have the G trail off and then start with the second part of the word after that. Um, if I was going to say the word ghost, would I? Ghost of a chance. I think this sort of line works well. This sort of S shape works well. Well, interesting. Well, Adam West just commented about how he writes the word glass. And he says, I write the same way. If I don't, then my cursive becomes largely illegible. So maybe that's, so he, he does this, A and SS. Except I'm sure that they're closer together. Um, yeah, sometimes if you keep your hand on the paper the entire time, it's easy for the whole thing to get a little sloppy. By doing these full stops and lift up and re resetting yourself, it it is sort of... neat -ter and tidier and a little more, more precise. It's like when people downshift in that standard car. I was a lazy standard car driver. I just throw the clutch in and then coast to a stop where, where, where other people, you know, they go from third to second and there's this little jerk that happens. And I'm sure that they they don't have to replace their clutch as much as I had to when I had that kind of a car because they're using it properly in deceleration where they're not sloppy or lazy. So lazy might be keeping the pen. But so anyway, doing this these these stops and starts may keep you focused. Is that true, Adam West? How's the boy wonder today? 
what is this pen? Oh, here I thought it was a more. It's say, it's a wherever, which actually is writing pretty well. These, this pen has this junk on it because it was in a zippered pen case that has silvery fabric and the silver paint or whatever was <laughs> layer of the fabric comes off on the pens. So I should just throw that one out because it's not doing anyone any good. This might be another pen that he might like. It's just a, it's one of my, my fun. I sing the praises of these taper right pens all the time. And suddenly I've created a fashion. A lot of people like them when they would just prefer to have a 51, which is what this is trying to pretend to be. But see, this pen has that degree of so maybe I'll send this pen along with the other two. Let him try them out. You start meand, yeah, meandering in any occupation, or if you're using any tool, a hammer or a saw. You know, if you if you meander in the middle of a cutting a board in half. That's not going to make anyone happy, but um, with a pen, especially if you understand a little bit about calligraphy, you and don't have a focus, I can just end up stopping in the middle of a word and start doodling on a separate piece of paper because I like the way I made that L or something, whatever the word is. So anyway, this is uh, what I'd like to do. Adam, are you able to come on camera with me? Do you have the desire to come on cam and talk about pens face to face? Talk about how you stop from meandering. If I have to write a, a sentence that I'm not just copying, but I'm thinking about, I'm stopping all the time. Like, am I going to use the word big or am I going to use the word large? Am I going to use the word big or the words very big or very bigly? What, what, what words am I going to use? So I'm always stopping when I'm coming up with putting words together in a letter that I'm going to write to someone or a drawing I'm doing, I, I'll, you know, do this kind of drawing and then I'm going to stop and say, okay, now the shadow is coming this way. So I'm going to draw this over here. And then I just look at the drawing and look at the thing I'm drawing and look back at the drawing and then I add more lines. So I'm always stopping when I'm doing natural writing. But I can get really lazy when I'm writing and mainly because I'm bored with what I'm writing often. And I just think, okay, well, that that's enough of that word. I'll go to the next one. You know, the last five letters of <laughs> Of a, word, of a word will just turn into mush. You know, I'll leave out Commonwealth. C-O-M-M-O-N-W-E-L. I'll just do that for Commonwealth. Like the last E-A-L is missing in Commonwealth. It's com commonth commonth. Um because, and I'll know what that means when I try to reread it, or more likely, never look at it again. 
But we all do things so differently. And, uh, but I think any pen that has a slightly shaped nib or any pen that has a slight flexibility to it would be great for him to try. Uh, from your reverie, what, what were you what were you daydreaming about, Adam? Were you? Like this pen here, I might, if he was right here, right now, I might give him this pen to write with. <laughs> it's, it's a Parker 21, Johnny One Note kind of a pen. Looks like the pen he could have used to write what he did is a sample. And then I would say, okay, thank you. Now we're going to give you a pen that has some pizzazz. And initially he might right without the pizzazz being shown and then i would go through the let's press down a little bit let's lift up a little bit let's try this a little bit and um then he'd say oh okay i see how this works but often seeing how it works doesn't completely change your handwriting you you go back to what you sort of know so it may take a while to to get your hand to make those lines. Ah, well, uh, I'll wish you happy dreams, and I'm going to sign off now anyway. But uh, thanks for watching, Adam. It's been a while since I've seen your name. I know my since I started streaming, my videos tend to be less focused and meander, meandering, depending on what people are saying and who's joining me. But um, I'm trying to be more focused a little bit. So I'll try to stick to the subject. So this one was about looking at someone's handwriting, reading what they wrote in their typewritten letter, the email to me and what they want, and me trying to think of what would be the pen that they would like to try first to get them on that journey toward uh, pizzazzful writing. Okay, I'll say goodnight too to everyone, including Adam. Good night.